Alright, episode 8, and today I'm going to be by myself, and I'm going to talk about a subject that's a little taboo, and it's um, the dangers of porn. And I prepared a few articles that I'm going to read and talk about, and we're going to talk about the dangers of porn, porn addiction, and how to overcome it, and to take steps to overcome it. <clears throat> Alright, the first article I found was five ways porn can harm your brain, body, and quality of life. And this is by fightthenewdrug.org. Okay, and the first one is porn encourages self-gratification. Delayed gratification is a crucial skill to learn if one is to maintain control and dictation direction in their life. <clears throat> Basically, the healthiest of individuals have mastered the art of discipline and delayed gratification. Repeatedly giving into the urge to watch pornography leads to lack of ability to delay gratification. Your brain becomes more and more focused on the things you find pleasurable and the discipline of delayed gratification falls to the wayside. And uh, number two, porn destroys our values. Porn is powerful. Porn, uh, we live in a world where we need to see something to believe it. And in our fast-paced, information-driven world, video is the preferred means of communication and information um, deception. <clears throat> the, thing, the thing is, video has the power to influence you, even replace behaviors in your mind without you being consciously aware of what you are seeing. Scary, right? As you watch videos, your subconscious mind is rapidly dissecting, translating, and making sense of what is being fed. The research has found that the subconscious mind translates and subsequently changes our behavior in one disturbing way. Excuse me. Pornography programs us to lower our standards sexually and encourage us to seek sex. In some cases, build intimate, unhealthy relationships with people who are willing to have sex without any boundaries. As exciting as that might sound, having sex with anyone who is available can be a sign of someone without much discipline. <clears throat> Number three, porn can cause erectile dysfunction in guys. So this one specifically is for men. Virtually, it is important for almost every guy I know. Vir no, no, I'm sorry. Vir virility is almost important for every guy I know. The rise in porn-induced erectile dysfunction is something to be alarmed about. Frequently watching porn can lead to erections which can increasingly only be induced by hardcore pornography. So what that basically means is only through porn can you get erect now and your wife doesn't even satisfy you anymore. You need that fantasy to get erect and turned on, which is not healthy at all. <clears throat> porn encourages social isolation. Watching porn in most cases demands isolation. Anything that the consumers do in secrecy usually leads to shame. One of the first effects of frequently watching porn for men and women, especially those who are young, is social awkwardness in public, which ironically leads to more shaming and hiding. Isolation and shame makes it difficult for us as people to share true intimacy with others. It makes it difficult to truly, difficult to true, truly grow and mature as a person and reach our full potential as people. And number five, porn does not inspire goal setting. The Afro mention. Self-gratification is a habit that cannot coexist with achieving worthy, difficult goals. People don't schedule pornography consumption the way they schedule time to work on their business, complete projects. It's usually, I'm going to watch porn from now till this, and my body shuts down sexually or I get bored. Part of this is biological. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter, a chemical released by nerve cells to transmit signals to other nerve cells. It's a key player in, the part, in that part of our brain responsible for reward-motivated behavior. Sex, eating tasty food, getting approved likes on social media all trigger the release of uh, dopamine. And that's the first article I wanted to read. And um, the second one I wanted to read is about the sexual revolution. And this is about uh, Hugh Hefner. And if you don't know who Hugh Hefner is, he's the creator of uh, Playboy magazine. So cr he created that whole Playboy um, empire, basically. And if you don't know what Playboy is, it's that... Um, it's a porn company with that bunny logo. And um, he pretty much is the grandfather of the sexual revolution. He jump-started it. And what the sexual revolution is, is basically um, where people decided that they can have sex with whoever you want. You can do whatever you want. Watch as much porn as you want. And uh, that led to some consequences in today's society, in this day and age. And actually, I'll talk about some of the consequences. Uh, one of the first ones is divorce rates skyrocketed since the 50s, since the start of the sexual revolution. Uh, I believe like two-thirds of marriages end in divorce, something like that. And of course, you see all kinds of sexual diseases because of this. And all kinds of broken families, broken people, all that stuff. So I'm going to read this article about Hugh Hefner. And this is called Hugh Hefner's Awful Legacy of Destruction, 
by FocusPress.org. <clears throat> Hugh Hefner, America's king of pornography, died Wednesday, leading to countless online articles praising his accomplishments as he left the world behind at 90 years of age. While many are celebrating his life, the truth is that he was one of the most destructive figures in the 20th century. His Playboy magazine was the int introduction to life of addiction for likely millions of people. I've heard quite a few men tell their story of entering into a long battle with porn with one glimpse of Hefner's magazines at a young age. While the world looks on those stories as positive memories and chalk it up boys being bo as boys being boys, both the Bible and science tells us that the that habits Hefner helped people form are incredibly destructive. They destroy trust, they destroy intimacy in marriages, they destroy honesty with God and fellow Christians. They destroy a healthy appreciation for what sex was intended to be. They destroy the brain as they wreck its dopamine reward system and cause people to seek increasingly depraved material to satisfy them. And speaking of that, about the depraved material, so when, uh, for example, most boys go through puberty around 12 to 13 years of age, sometime in middle school. And when they first get those sexual urges, anything can satisfy them, even uh, Victoria's Secret magazine. That to them is crazy arousing. But as you get into pornography and uh, um, like ha more hardcore pornography, you keep searching for more depraved material, something more exciting, because Victoria's Secret magazines don't do it for you. So you go to porn, okay, some porn isn't doing it for you, so then you go even further, you get into fetishes, you get into uh, fetishes, and you get into stuff like sadomasochism, you know, with the, with the whips and chains and the Fifty Shades of Grey type stuff. And it can get even worse, you know? It can get even worse from there and more depraved. Like, there's, like, disgusting porn where, like, people, like, I don't know what to say, it's heckin' nasty. But you get them, you get my point, like, it's, it, it gets worse and worse, and you seek more depraved material such as somebody getting freaking pooped on or peed on. It, it, it's so nasty, I don't even want to say it. <clears throat> so that's why Jesus instructed us to go to whatever measures necessary to overcome lust. Whatever measures necessary, if that means delete all your social media, do it. Whatever it takes, do it. If it means stop talking to a certain girl, stop talking to a certain guy, do it. Run from them, flee from them. Whatever measures necessary. <clears throat> and beyond just the magazine he produced, Hefner was also known for the lifestyle he had led, surrounded by countless models in, Cal in his California mansion. Many viewed him as the luckiest man on earth for living such a hedonistic life. His sexual freedom has been held up as a man's highest hope in life for decades, and yet it was so hopelessly shallow. Excuse me. Through Hefner embodied everything the world sees as a good time, inside his life was devoid of any meaning, true connection, or love. Solomon, the wisest man on earth in his day, pointed out in Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon, what a blessing it is for a man to treasure the wife of his youth. Love, come from, love comes from commitment, self-sacrifice, and service, not endless sex. Studies have borne out of the fact that relationships are better when sex is put off. God was right, and man continues to be wrong. Who would have guessed? So I want to read that sentence again. Studies have borne out the fact that relationships are better when sex is put off. And why is that? So when you get in a relationship, what I've noticed from a lot of people that I've known, a lot of my friends and, um, and stuff like that, what I've noticed a, a lot from some of my friends is um, if you put sex off, it's a lot easier to break up or get away from people who are toxic. So if you're in a relationship and you have sex, often it's harder to get away from toxic people because you're attached and you don't know why you're attached. And the reason you're attached is because you're having a sexual relationship with them. Because uh, sex is a very spiritual thing, and it can keep you attached, and you don't know why you're attached, but often it's sex. But when you put sex off until marriage, it's a lot easier to leave toxic people or people who are just not for you, you know? There's, no, there's none of that spiritual attachment, and that spiritual attachment is very real. Call it what you want, spiritual attachment or, or whatever, whatever name you want to give it. There's something uh, very intimate and um, different about sex when it comes to relationships. <clears throat> Hugh Hefner is not a man whose life should be celebrated. Instead, we must be diligent to rescue those who have fallen into the trap of evil that he has said all those decades ago and that is carried on by countless websites today. All right, well, that was that article. And uh, I found a new article called Five Ways Porn Can Ruin Relationships. First one is porn teaches viewers to objectify their partner. The recent study found that through porn, objectifies and dehumanizes both men and women elements of gender inequality are at play 
with men's faces going unshown in many cases, but women depicted more as objects. Another study analyzed uh, hundreds of scenes in popular porn and found that 88% of them depict a violent behavior towards women. And uh, by the way, there's a interesting fact, the more violent uh, a porn video is, the more money it gets for some reason. Because like I said in the beginning, um, when you first get into porn, you look for more depraved material because basic porn will satisfy you. You need something more and more and it just grows and grows and grows. So the more depraved, the more nastier it is, it, it gets more money. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, another study analyzed hundreds of scenes in popular porn and found that 88% of them depict violent behavior towards women. Porn can deceive viewers into looking at every person as though they were an object available to them for their own pleasures. And not as a person who was created in the image of God. Sex is meant to be enjoyed by a couple who love and respect one another. A healthy romantic relationship is cultivated through physical, intellectual, and emotional connections. If one is removed, the entire relationship will crumble. Absolutely. <clears throat> Number two, porn sets unrealistic standards. Men are more than twice as likely as women to use pornography. 73% versus 32% according to one study. But even they're not the major majority using it. Women are still affected by porn use. Some women are put in a position where they feel they must compete for sexual and emotional attention. With the women in, their, with the women in the porn, their boyfriends or husbands watch the fantasy women. And pornography are portrayed as unrealistically sexually attractive, often because of plastic surgery, stage makeup, digital editing, and so on, filters. It is impossible for a real woman to match up to these fantasy women, which can make her feel in fear and insecure. Uh, Genesis 2, 24 through 25, <coughs> excuse me, shows us that God designed sex to be within marriage as a way for a husband and a wife to become united as one flesh. Shame was never supposed to be part of marriage. Once pornography and sin enter the process, shame can easily make its way into the lives of both the husband and the wife. Porn also depicts unrealistic sexual scenarios. Mm, in the real world, sex is a way for husbands and wives to show their love and serve one another. It is not always exciting. Studies show that watching porn decreases sexual pleasure. Some porn addicts can even desire porn more than they want to be intimate with their partner. And that's very sad, and that's where erectile dysfunction comes in where you only get turned on by the fantasies on your computer, on your phone, wherever you watch those filthy sites. Porn also depicts unrealistic scenarios and unrealistic scenarios in the real world. Sex is a way for a husband and wife to show their love and to serve one another. It's not always exciting, studies show. Oh, I already read that. My bad. Um, Ephesians 5, 27. Call men to love their wives sacrificially. For those who aren't married, the process starts now. The desire to view porn doesn't just disappear once you get married. It only becomes a harder habit to break once it becomes a regular habit. So just like if you feed a fire gasoline, it gets bigger and bigger and eventually, you know, and, and it gets harder to put out, you know. So do, don't feed that fire. Number three, watching porn can be a slippery slope. Once intimacy in a marriage is cheapened, the addicted partner can begin looking for other ways to satisfy their sexual fantasy. And those sexual fantasies never end. They just get more different, more depraved, they need because they need something more exciting. A Victoria's Secret magazine can't arouse you anymore, so you need porn. You need to watch videos. Those videos that you've been watching don't arouse you anymore. Now you have to watch sadomasochism. Sadomasochism doesn't arouse you anymore. What's next? You know what? What more? How how much more depraved can it get? And it can get very depraved. Um, the addict quickly builds up tolerance for what they are watching until it begins to no longer arouse them in the same way. They can then move on to a hardcore pornography or even begin to try out what they have watched online with a sexual partner. Porn destroys trust. Trust is the core of any relationship and it has to be consistently grown to maintain a healthy relationship. It takes a long time to build trust, but it's easy to destroy it quickly and then extremely difficult to rebuild it. Porn is one of the easiest ways to completely break trust because it violates the intimacy of the love, of the love relationship. There is an extreme level of hurt caused by finding out your partner is addicted to pornography. Because it can feel as though your partner has been cheating, and uh, I, I would count it as cheating. Studies have shown that porn usage is a large contributing factor to about half of all divorces in the U.S. That is insane. And going back to my point of how the sexual revolution helped skyrocket divorces. Mm, that was one of them. Porn leads to isolation, and this is very true because I had many friends tell me this. And because porn can use... Le because porn use can can lead to less interest in real sex and contribute to divorce. It can frequently lead to isolation, but even for those that want to get help, porn can also be isolating effect because of the guilt and shame. 
associated with using it, which might make a porn user avoid seeking help because it might be embarrassing to admit that he or she has a problem. And um, I feel like people should not avoid seeking help because often a lot of people feel like they're, you know, they're alone in this situation, but it's not true. In fact, uh, I remember reading a statistic that 80%, something like 88% of Christians have viewed or are, are struggling with porn addiction. So you're not the only one, you know, seek help, talk to people, confess. David wrote about this in Proverbs 6.32. The man who commits adultery has no sense. Whoever does so destroys himself. Adultery is not just having sex outside of marriage. It also includes imagining having sex with someone other than your spouse. Matthew 5.28. David knew firsthand what adultery could do to a man because of his relationship with Bathsheba. That mistake led to the problem for not only David, but also for all of Israel. Pornography can have devastating effects on both persons viewing it uh, those around him, if you're struggling with it, reach out to a trusted friend, an organization, a counselor, or program that can help you. Okay, and also I wanted to pull up some statistics and actual, like, real facts that I can uh, give to you guys. Thanks. Okay. And this is by Conquer Series. 15 mind-blowing statistics about pornography and the church. Number one, over 40 million Americans are regular visitors to porn sites. The average visit lasts six minutes and 29 seconds. There are around 42 million porn, wow, porn website, which totaled 370 million pages of porn. My goodness. The porn industry annual revenue is more than NFL, NBA, and MLB combined. It's also more than the combined revenues of ABC, CBS, and NBC. It's insane. 47% of families in the United States reported that pornography is a problem in their home. Pornography uses increased the martial infidelity rate by more than 300%. 11 is the average age that a child is exposed to porn, and 94% of children will see porn by the age of 14. And I think it's going to be a lot younger because um, younger kids uh, now have iPod, iPads, phones, and uh, there's just so much of this uh, on the Internet. It's really easy to access. The click of a button, super easy. Number seven, 56% of American divorce involve one party having an obsessive interest in pornographic websites. 70% of Christian youth pastors report that they have at least one teen come to them for help in dealing with pornography in the past 12 months. Again, only one teen comes to them according to the statistic. And because like I said before, a lot of people feel shame and guilt and they think they're the only one struggling with this. And I'm gonna tell you like you are not the only one. There are many people struggling with this and uh, who have overcome or uh, are still struggling with it. So you're not the only one. Don't let that stop you from seeking help. Definitely do it. 59% of pastors said that married men seek their help for porn use. 33% of women aged 25 and under search for porn at least once a month. Only 13% of self-identified Christian women say they never watch porn. 87% of Christian women say they have watched porn. I think that 13% might be a little lower because people lie, but who knows. 55% of married men and 25% of married women say that porn they watch porn at least once a month. 57% of pastors say porn addiction is the most damaging issue in their congregation. And 69% uh, say porn has adversely impacted the church. Number 15, only 7% of pastors say their church has a program to help people struggle with pornography. And that really needs to change. Um, a lot of churches, they don't really discuss porn because they, you know, they assume that, oh, they don't know that if anybody struggles with it or not. They assume that they don't. But as you can see from these statistics, like a lot of people struggle with it. A lot of Christian men and women uh, struggle with porn use, and there's no program to help with overcome that. And that's really sad. Because, and the fact that everybody is, um, many people are very scared to uh, approach, you know, a pastor or a friend because they feel ashamed because they think they're alone. But if some kind of program was put in place in churches, you know, or in other places, I feel like, We'd see so much progress. So what should we do? These statistics can be overwhelming. The fact that pornography has such a tight grip in our society does not mean that the church is helpless to fight against it. Instead, Christian leaders must stand up and lead their churches through battle. First, leaders must be willing to admit the problem exists in their churches. You can't treat a disease unless you know it's there. And that's absolutely true. So realize that the disease of pornography is growing within the church's body. The next step is to put a program and process in place. A Barna study revealed that 90% of pastors see porn at an increasing, as an increasing problem in their church, and only 7% have any plans to deal with it. So 
basically porn is like the one big secret. Porn addiction is the one big secret that everyone has, but no one talks about because everybody is too ashamed. Because everybody in their own minds, they think, oh, I'm alone in this, but you're not alone. You have a bunch of people that struggle with this. Whatever you choose, your plans will be worthless if they are not boldly started. Um, yeah, and that's basically it for the articles, for most of them. And then now I'm going to talk about ways you can overcome porn addiction, how to start. First one is you must acknowledge the addiction exists. Many who are caught in the trap of addiction will admittedly deny the problem. And that's everybody who's addicted to alcohol, who's addicted to food, who's a glutton and addicted to food, who's addicted to drugs, who's addicted to um, um, pornography. He who conceals, and this is Proverbs 28, 13. He who conceals his transgressions will not prosper. But he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion. So, you know, like this Bible verse is basically saying, tell people what you're struggling with. Let them know. People who are going to help you, you know, like, don't just tell some, like, random grandma on the street. Like, tell a friend that you really trust. Tell a family member. Uh, tell a, your pastor, your youth pastor, whatever, you know, tell somebody. And number two is you must recognize that what you are doing is wrong. Addicts always find a way to justify their problem in their mind for all that is in the world. Lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but it's from the world. John 2, 16. So again, you have to recognize what you're doing is wrong. A lot of people say, oh, I'm not harming anybody. You know, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm just having a good time. But then again, it ruins, you know, in the end, the long-term consequences is it, it can ruin your life in an extremely negative way. And also I wanted to mention often... Uh, people, porn addicts, will use it as an escape from um, uh, depression. And just like gluttons use food as an escape from depression, and alcoholics use alcohol as an escape from depression, and uh, drug addicts use drugs to escape depression and bad days, so do people who are addicted to porn. You know, it just that gives them that little bit of uh, pleasure, you know, but in the end, it's not worth it because the consequences are way out the benefits. You know, it's not definitely not worth it. Number three, you must not blame others. If my wife or husband were just more affectionate, if women or men were not so seductive, Adam blamed Eve and she blamed the serpent. Instead, you must begin to take responsibility for your actions. So be responsible for your actions. Take responsibility. Blame nobody but yourself. This is your problem and do something about it. Make yourself accountable to a spiritual authority, perhaps a pastor or a mature believer. Everybody needs a safe person to share their struggles with. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that they may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. So again, speak to a friend who's you know more mature in the Christian faith who you can tell your problems to. Friend, pastor, whoever. Mom, dad, I don't know, cousin. Um, number five, you must recognize that willpower is not the answer because often our willpower can... Um, can fail us. At a weak moment, your will may fail you by admitting that you are in need of God's help. You open access to a spiritual intervention in your life. You must yield your will to God's will. That's when you can become a new begin a new work in your life. And that's very true. You know, God loves it when uh, when we call out to Him for help. God loves it that we're dependent on Him. When we're dependent on Him, study the Word of God concerning sexual purity. Therefore, putting aside all filthiness and all that remains of wickedness and humanity. In hum I mean, sorry, in humility, receive the word implanted, which is able to save the, your souls. Number seven, you must destroy any pornography in your possession. You can't wean yourself off pornography. Think of the hidden pornography in your home as a ticking time bomb uh, that will ultimately destroy your family and marriages. So get rid of all the magazines you have. Get rid of the people you talk to that makes you um, stumble. Girls, guys, whatever. Um, delete pictures, delete contacts. Do whatever it takes, you know. I had a friend tell me, um, a friend that was struggling with porn addiction, tell me that he deleted, like, hundreds of, like, pictures off of his um, laptop to start, and his, it really did help. So get rid of everything that can cause you to stumble. Number eight, you must learn to flee temptation. Self-deception may enter when you think you can play with fire without getting burned. Do not enter the path of the wicked and do not proceed in the way of evil men. Avoid it, do not pass it, turn away from it, and pass on. So, you must learn to flee. Yeah, so, sexual sin is very different from other sins because other sins, it harms the soul, pretty much the soul only. 
So when you, you know, when you're gluttons, so if you're like, let's say you're a glutton, you don't have to flee from food. You don't have to flee from fast food. You can face your sin head on, you know. Um, you can fight your sin head on with God's help. You can fight, uh, let's see, what else you can fight? You can fight lying, you know. If, you're, if, if lying is one of your sins, you can fight it head on with God's help. Uh, but when it comes to sexual sin, God is saying you have to flee because he understands how weak humans are. And we have free will, and he knows that we are very weak, and he says flee from it. Nobody is, like, strong. We are all weak people when it comes to uh, sexual temptations. Give yourself time to work. Uh, number nine, give yourself time to work through the process of recovery. More than often than not, God chose us to take us through a learning and growing process. It can be very painful, victory over addiction, but it should be viewed as a marathon and not a sprint. Absolutely. Number 10, it's kind of cliche, but you must approach your addictions one day at a time. Look for little victories and rejoice in the progress you're making. Recovery is a, a cinch by the inch, but a trail by the mile. So again, yeah, look for little victories. So let's say you watch porn every single day, right? But, you know, you started this um, battle of trying to stop your porn addiction, so you stop it for a day or two days. That's a little victory. That's good. But don't get comfortable with that. Just, you know, um, put up higher goals, higher and higher goals that you can achieve and never... Um, Let's say even if you're eight years clean from porn addiction or porn at all, let's say you're eight years clean, still treat yourself like you're a terrible addict. I remember watching a video on a heroin addict, and he has been eight years clean, but he said, if heroin was here on my table in this room right now, I would take it. And that's how you should treat yourself. Treat yourself like you're an absolute addict. It doesn't matter if 20 years go by. Treat yourself like as if it's a dangerous, dangerous thing, and it is a dangerous thing. Um, Another... Well, this is my advice that I want to give is don't feed the fire. So whatever you feed grows and whatever you starve dies, right? So, you know, don't feed the fire. Do not entertain these thoughts that can lead you to porn, right? Because that's how it starts. You see something on Instagram. You see something on Snapchat. You see something on a, on a site, you know, maybe like a woman in a bikini or, or a shirtless shredded guy for women. I don't know. On like a picture online and you start entertaining these thoughts and in and, you know, if you feed a fire, it gets bigger and bigger, and it's almost impossible to put out. It is possible, but it's a lot harder. So prevent yourself from entertaining these thoughts. Also, find escapes, you know. If you have these feelings to where you want to watch porn, replace it with something. It's kind of impossible just to get rid of it, but what you can do is replace it with something. So uh, find a hobby. Go play guitar, piano, go work out, go, I don't know. Go go do some puzzles, go write a book, read a book. Dude, there's so many things you can do. You know, go hang out with your friends. You know, use you use your sexual energy for good, right? Don't just waste it away. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um it's a little hard to do it without a without somebody you know to talk to right here, but uh I was very convicted to do this for some reason. I was gonna do shower thoughts but uh as a topic for my podcast, but I was just very convicted to do um the dangers of porn. And I hope you guys like this. And also, I realized I never introduced myself in any of my videos. I don't think anyone cares, but my name is Vitaly. I started this podcast because I was really bored. And uh, thank you for watching.